this video is going to be short and sweet because it's about posting and you've been posting for a while. So in your sales journal, every line should have a, a customer number or customer name on there. And you're going to post only the amounts in the accounts receivable debit column to the accounts receivable ledger. It's the only things you post individually. These two, you're going to post the totals of. So you would post Wells Apartment. You do the date. You do the sales journal number. Again, because we have multiple journals now, you got to put an S for sales journal in the page. You're going to put the accounts receivable debit. You know it's a debit because it says debit right there. It has a debit balance, so you add them together for your new balance, and then you go back to your sales journal and you put that customer number in the post route. And you're going to do that for every line of your sales journal. Then once you have all of those posted, you're going to add your totals up, and you're going to post the totals of each of these columns to the account that's written at the top. So you're gonna post this one to accounts receivable as a debit in the general journal, this one to the sales account in the general journal or general ledger as a credit, and this one to sales tax payable in the general ledger as a credit. So you start with your single rule, you write the word, to the date, and then you write the word totals. Remember, you gotta have that S on Cengage. It will count it wrong if you don't put the S on there because there's multiple totals there. Do your column totals and then double rule. When you do your column totals, it's always a good idea to just add your two sales columns together to make sure they equal your debit column. Then you're gonna post them. Start with your date, then your page number, then you're gonna do your totals. So accounts receivable debit comes to accounts receivable as a debit debit balance, debit transaction, add them together for your new balance. Sales credit, credit balance, credit transaction, add them together. Sales tax payable credit. You're going to put it as a credit here. You don't have a, in this example, there's no balance up there, so you just bring it over as a credit. So we will talk about this later, but basically you hold on to that sales tax until you pay it into the government. And typically that's done um, once a month or once a quarter or, or however. And so that's why this has shows a debit and a zero balance because they paid that into the government. Then you have to come back and put those account numbers in parentheses underneath those column totals, just like we did in the purchases journal and the cash payments journal. That shows that that total was posted to 1130, and this total was posted to 4110, and this total was posted to 2120. Really, really important that you show that you posted those totals. That's how these are going to equal, your accounts receivable account is going to equal your accounts receivable ledger. 